yo how's it going so uh crazy coincidence here i recently just got a credit card to buy some like on, i'm not gonna lie a tv and this video pops up in my recommendation credit cards the business of enslaving poor people and i mean i had to I, I, you have to watch i have to watch it like how you know. started in 1949 by a guy I'm named a frank x mcnamara the Diners Club was the first real payment card company in the world, and it let you eat at restaurants on credit, and then you could pay off your bill at the end of each month. But it wasn't a true credit card. It was what's called cool. a charge card. And it was the first of its kind to survive and thrive. So I would say those are called charge cards. Um, there's been a few fintechs that are doing that now. American Express traditionally has done that, the platinum, the gold. Uh, but yeah, with, with credit cards, you're paying you can pay off the minimum and then you can accrue a lot of debt and pay a crap ton of interest and that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, charge cards, the expectation is that you yes, pay it off. Yes, interest is the worst. This is Sebi from the YouTube channel Ask Sebi. He teaches people how to profit from using credit cards instead of getting enslaved by them. Oh, so I'm Sebastian subscribing to this Sebi. dude. I talk about credit cards and how normal people can use it to do aspirational trips. In its first year, 10,000 people signed up for the Diners Club card. By 1959, the club had over 1 million members. It oh, went what a viral. Profit. See, when Frank McNamara started the Diners Club card, he has stumbled upon something insidiously genius. Charge cards and later credit cards tapped into the very essence of human nature and greed. By paying with a credit card, you disconnected yourself from the pleasure of buying to the pain of paying. It makes yeah. you emotionally feel like you're getting something for free when logically you know that isn't the case. Yeah, See, one of the most suffering. efficient ways to make money Long is to term. get people in debt, to make them your debt slaves. There is a reason why some of the biggest dynasties throughout history come in the form of bankers. That's because all you have to do is hand someone money at an interest rate, and that's literally it. There's no fulfillment process, you don't have to manufacture and ship them a product. All you have to do is sit back, and your debt slaves will work for you to pay off the loan. Ideally, you would either want them to take out an incredibly large loan, like a mortgage for a house, so they're trapped in that loan for half or all of their life, yeah. or you would want them to have an insanely high interest rate, so that even if they only have a tiny bit of debt, they would still be caught in a vicious cycle for life, which would obviously trap poor people the easiest, and credit cards or became the would. perfect vehicle for doing so. It allowed you to apply the same psychology that traps people into giant loans like for a house, but with everyday purchases. I mean, look at it. It's just a piece of plastic. It's so innocent and pretty. It's just one purchase that I can't afford right now. I'll pay it off until they don't. And before they know it, they've racked up so much credit card debt that they can barely afford to pay off just the interest every month. That's why I kind of have like for what I just bought, I saved up half. I saved up half of everything that I had, like half of half for the TV. Like, I feel like that's somewhat of a good strategy. Just like have a half of it already set and then uh, accumulate the, the rest over time. And then, I sh yeah, I guess that's my strategy right now. Hopefully it works. I don't want to be in credit card debt. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to get, you know, chased down by like what the IRS or who, I don't know who comes after you when you owe a lot of credit. I forgot. But anyway. And that's exactly how things played out. Today, the average American adult has three credit cards with the average balance of over $5,500. While the credit card Ooh, companies have hauled in over $176 billion in income wow. in 2020 alone. This is how credit cards became the modern day loan sharks. Yep. What do you think I am? Some financial institution? Oh, no, you're right. We just need to go to the bank. Oh. oh. You're fucking crazy. Stop it now, will you? I got money for that commercial, you know. commercial. You don't got my money. You don't got my money. This video is about the dark side of credit cards. However, I'm actually a huge fan of them. I own five credit cards myself, and I have never paid okay. a single cent in interest to credit card companies. So what? if you play your cards right, you never buy what you can't afford, you always pay off your credit card every month, you can reap all the perks they give you for free without becoming a sucker. I don't want to be a sucker. Yeah. Okay. I like, the, I like the jam. The Bank America card, you can charge almost anything, almost anywhere. The Bank America card gives you instant credit from Boston to Honolulu, from London to Bangkok. 
The Bike AmeriCard will soon be coming to Southern Ohio as another service. The insidious the genius of credit cards. Talk to me. Working off of the success of the Diners Club, Bank of America launched the first general purpose credit card in 1958, called mm. the Bank AmeriCard. Bank AmeriCard. Think of it as money. They sent it to thousands of people all over America, and because it didn't have a magnetic strip or any way to keep a record of purchases, Bank of America lost millions. I should have been in that day, time. Credit card fraud was ridiculously easy, but even though they lost money, they gained a massive customer base. Bank America, today's way to pay. By 1966, the idea behind the credit card was so popular, Bank of America started licensing it to other banks. Then a merger in the 70s created Visa, and the credit competition mm. was officially on. By the 80s, most credit cards came with a magnetic strip. This opened up the floodgates for more and more banks to jump on the bandwagon and offer their customers their own credit cards. People loved it. They were spending money that wasn't theirs. Along with other factors, household debt in the US started skyrocketing. The oh, wow. business model worked perfectly, but there was still something missing. Profits. Okay. At the time, these credit cards were only charging 4-5% to interest compared to today's average of over 16%. Damn. Sure, banks were making modest money off of the interest they charged, but in most cases, they were legally barred from raising rates higher. They needed a way to charge people more for using credits. They needed to turn this new genius tool that made people think that they could buy stuff for free into a loan sharking tool. And by the late 80s and early 90s, they finally found it. <laughs> God, I love Wolf of Wall Street. Oh yeah, that banjo. The interest race. At the time, most states in the US had a lot of regulations that prevented credit card companies from raising interest rates. But then, one state budges. South Dakota eliminates its cap on credit interest rates. The state had been cash strapped for decades, and charging more interest was their Hail Mary, their last ditch effort to avoid drowning in bankruptcy. And it got mm. even better for credit card companies. Just a few years later, the US Supreme Court passes the Marquette decision, allowing banks to export their interest rates to other states. This was incredibly important, because it meant that if a bank was based in South Dakota and had an interest rate of 25%, they could charge that same percentage all over the US, regardless oh, of the interest shit. rate loss in the other crazy. states. Effectively, the interest rate cap in other states became meaningless. Suddenly, all the banks wanted to move to South Dakota. Yeah, and because of course. they could charge a lot more interest, they started offering credit cards to everyone. College students, young adults, the unemployed, everyone gets a credit card. But if you were one of these more- Oh my gosh, you get a car. I mean, think of the insurance though. I would just immediately sell off that car. <laughs> For risky individuals, you would just have to pay an insanely high interest rates that could keep you trapped for life. It got to the point where Citibank was one of the most profitable businesses in the early 2000s. Mm. Then the Supreme Court passes another decision, called Smiley. Okay. It removed the last bits of regulation on late fees and interest, and basically gave banks free reign to rake in the money. The result? Things like 36% interest rates, or changing clients' interest rates at a moment's notice. A 36% interest rate meant that if you took two years to pay back a $10,000 credit balance, you would actually be paying the bank over $14,000 and around $590 every month. Fuck. Most people can't afford $600 a month and end up being trapped for much longer. Even people who never missed a payment suddenly found that their interest rates had almost tripled. But there was pretty much nothing they could do about it, and the credit card companies were just getting started. Mm. Jesus. Money to burn. Okay. Evidently, some people have money to burn. Why else would they pay an outrageous fee to carry a simple credit card when they could carry the Discover card, the card that charges no annual fee, yet pays cash back on every charge, which means it puts money into your pocket instead of burning a hole in it. The art of predatory lending. Okay. By the 2000s, credit card usage had doubled, even in low-income households. After taking control of interest rates, their next target was getting new customers. And obviously, the client base to target were young, impressionable college students. Most of them wanted extra cash and wouldn't be bothered to read the fine prints. A perfect combination. 
Most of them were also likely to miss payments, which meant credit card companies could slap them with late fees and penalties. A credit card company's worst nightmare is a customer that pays off their debt every month because they get all the benefits without paying the interest. What they really want are the revolvers, people who can't afford to pay back their debt so the amount of money they owe just gets bigger and bigger. American credit card companies were starting to look like high class loan sharks. They would hire teams of lawyers to write their contracts, then bury hundreds of loopholes in the fine prints. These loopholes gave them the power to raise interest rates even if you miss the payment on another creditor's loan, choose public holidays or weekends for payment due dates so there was a greater chance your money would arrive late. They would even advertise going paperless to save the environment, when the reality is they know most people aren't likely to read the fine print in an email. Looking for even more customers, credit card companies started offering attractive rewards and cash back rewards for using their cards. They will offer 0% fees for the first 6 months to a year to get you used to missing payments and not feeling the pain of getting charged interest until it becomes a habit. And they even lower their minimum payment from 5% to 2%. Small, one card. Visa makes sense. Today, the average American family has over $8,000 in credit card debts, and most of it is just collecting more and more penalties for late payments. And even when families declare bankruptcy, they still get offers from dozens of credit card companies for even more money they can spend. Now, all this may sound bad, but there's a way to fight back. All a right. way to beat the credit card companies at their own game. Please teach me. Hi, I'm Donald Trump to talk to you about the remarkable convenience of the Visa check card. Everyone knows the Visa check card's directly connected to the money in your checking account. Oops. But if your card's lost or stolen, did you know you're not liable for fraudulent purchases? Got it. And you'll get every single cent of that money back. See, oh, I actually love credit cards. I myself okay. have five cards right now, and every single purchase I make goes on my credit card. I only and have one. I've never paid a single cent in interest to credit card companies, ever. Have you ever paid a single cent in interest? No, doesn't really make sense to, because like the interest rates are crazy. So why would, yeah, why would I ever put myself in a situation to do that? How, how long have you had credit cards? Um, probably like eight years or so. I, 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 yeah, it's been a pretty long time. While at the same time, I still get to enjoy all the perks they offer for free. So what kind of benefits do you enjoy these days? I think the most useful ones that I appreciate every day now is airline lounge access. So the platinum card, you get access to Delta side clubs and also Centurion lounges. I think you went to the Centurion lounge in London. Yeah, for me, I, I think it elevates that airport experience a lot more. So a lot of people associate airports with just terrible experiences, sitting around crowded, uh, waiting hours on end. And when you have lounge cards, you kind of, I don't know, you kind of appreciate it a lot more. You're like, oh, I can just drink free alcohol and have free food and have free coffee and hang out on my laptop for an hour or two. That's not that bad. Yeah, like, I don't really mind doing that. that. It's a lot more comfortable. And a lot of those cards, the annual fee sounds very aggressive because you see this $700 number, but a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of credits and you might not use every single credit, but it makes it a lot more reasonable. So that 700 might really only be $200. And then if you, let's say, fly every quarter, that's like about $50 per like trip. That's not too bad. And then if you fly more, obviously it becomes even better. And then mm. uh, with points, with like intro bonuses, uh, you can do just really cool trips. So right now I'm in Vail, saving a crap ton of money because each night here is supposed to be $2,000. And if you like go around and you hear other people talking and the watches people are wearing, you know that people are dropping a lot of money here. And I'm like, oh, I'm here using points and it's like 25,000 points. That's effectively $250. But yeah, so I'm spending $250 worth of points for something that costs $2,000 a night. That's a no brainer wow. to me. Are you always getting new credit cards to get more points or how's that work? So there's a lot of different roles involved where you can only get certain bonuses either once every two years or once in a lifetime. So a lot of the once in a lifetime cards, American Express ones, I've pretty much gotten every single card. So like there's no more bonuses for me over there. But with something like Chase, I can now circle back and get other Chase bonuses. Literally, That's the only cool, thing you I have guess. to do to make sure you don't get screwed over by credit card companies is to one, don't buy what you can't afford. If you wouldn't use your own cash on it, don't use a credit card. And two, pay it off every month. If you just do those two things, you will never pay a single dime in interest or fees to credit card companies. Yeah, sure. The average American, I think, has like 5K in credit card debt or whatever. So how do you view credit cards? I think it's like a knife or like alcohol. So if you're someone who is irresponsible, I mean, anyone can be very dangerous with a knife, right? But if you're 
if you're someone who's trying to be a chef or even alcohol is a good example, right? If you can drink responsibly, alcohol is not really a problem. But yes, there yeah. are people out there who, where alcohol ends up hurting them and for them, I would agree that it makes sense to avoid it entirely. Starts but binging also there's, an, there's a lot things. of other credit cards that are not, I guess they don't work the same way as the traditional credit cards in the sense that you have to pay it off in full every month. So there's a lot more products out there that do stuff like that, that might be better for those people. So they can't really accrue debt. They have to pay it off every single month anyways. If you want to learn more about how Sebi hacks credit cards, I'll link to his YouTube channel and Instagram below. But the only way you'll be able to take advantage of credit cards is if you already have good credits. And if you still need to build your credit to get your first credit card in the first place, you can check out our sponsor Extra with the link below, which is again something I wish I had when I was trying to build my credit score. Fortunately for me, I got good credit. I learned early on that if you fuck up the credit, you're gonna you're gonna fuck yourself over in the future. So, you know, I didn't want to fuck up future me. That's that'd be just a foolish thing to do. But definitely a great video. It shows me it really shows me like how credit cards truly started and like you know from the south dakota thing of them putting like everyone just started to base their banks started to base their their whole businesses are in south dakota so they can just not have caps on their interest rates and the how they like you know preyed on the young students especially the ones that are like you know because when you're in college you're broke and you just want to like you know like feel a little more free to buy certain things and not just all going towards um, uh, school and stuff. But yeah, great, great video.